It was done they, by someone was, independent was, in the bank. Just said, all right then, thanks. So if I got a bad valuation, I'll just, just instruct another valuation. So the other half that happens over there, I pay for that. And um, it's like ridiculously cheap. It just gets lost. It's so you did, you grew quick. Mm. You did a bit of self-managing, a bit yeah. of using some local agents. Then you set your own one up. Mm. And now you're growing smarter. Yeah, I, I think, well, there's two points to come back to. The first one is all the stuff that I bought and it was too much and it was crazy. I felt like when I when I started buying in Nottingham, so that, that was most of the crummy stuff is in Northampton. I still own it, by the way. I still own it all. I was saved. I'm an idiot. But the Bank of England's base rate came down to 0.01%. Every single one of those stupid flats that I bought in Northampton started making 500 quid a month. That was a mm. fluke. Right. And I could look at it and go, well, I wonder how long I've got to fix that. It turns out I had until November last year, didn't I? Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah October yeah, actually, yeah. I think it was. October yeah. last year. I had that long of ridiculously low interest rates. But my plan was, every single one of those that I've got in Northampton, I need to buy another decent, proper done properly it really is cheap i really have added, added value you know i didn't just go in there explode a can of paint and go it's mm. worth 30 grand more than i paid for it because it wasn't i bought it cheap i added some value i provided a decent and safe home for some you know people to live in got the right just set it all up right with you know the licensing's right the the um all the paperwork to rent it out's right all of the everything about it is right and craig's done a lot of that and he sorted out all the other stuff Interestingly, is um, he's just recently got the very almost the last of it in Northampton now, hasn't it? We've got yeah, letting true. business in Northampton, and that had some well, of the very kind of going to say. So now we manage property pretty much across the whole of the mm. north of England. Yep. The northeast, across to the northwest, and yep. down down as far as Northampton. We've got a, we've got an office there now as well. Um, but now you have a stronger focus on just buying in the north, really, don't you? Yeah. Uh, not in the Midlands anymore. Not buying in Northampton anymore. Why is the, why the north? It's it's where it is now. It's where the where the where the numbers work. When now. I say the north, by the way, I mean South Yorkshire, Sheffield, Rotherham, yeah. or Hull, North Lincolnshire, or North East, know, North the North East, East Sunderland, it's, it's, it's and that's Middlesbrough, probably my favorite right across right to now. sort of Lancashire. It's where it's where you can find the deals. It's where yeah. you it's where you can find the deals. So you go where where the where the uh, the deals are. I'm pretty convinced that we'll find deals in other parts of the country as we start looking. You know where your focus goes. That's where the money flows. True, um, and I think we are we're looking in those places. But the deals we like. So some people think the only deals worth doing are in London. I've seen emails from people going, no, mm, no, yeah. no, no, no. "Come back, let me know when you're buying in London." Yeah, well, I don't know it's about London. Deals we like are two and three bed family homes. Yeah, uh, I love them. Yeah, well, I think that they, they've they've got great capital growth instantly. People sell. That crappy yeah. 60, 70,000 pound house, will it ever go up in value? Of course it will. It goes up, it goes up quicker than, okay, maybe if you'd have bought a, let's say it was 70 grand, it will go up to 120,000 pounds very quickly. Would a, would a 700,000 pound house go up to 1.2 million pounds as quickly? No. no. The answer is no, it wouldn't. Um, it's all okay, about you, volume. You do have to buy 10 of those houses, and that is a challenge. But also for most of, well, for me and for our clients, um, I think it's the opportunity. It's easy to visible. Not everybody's got mm. £720,000. Lots of people, comparatively, have got the 72. It's small baby steps. I like that. I love yeah. buying the small little houses, buying one or two a month rather than a whole great big thing every year. I just like yeah. it. It's slow and steady. It keeps you, keeps you going. That's what we like helping other landlords yeah. do, isn't it? I don't know. What would you reckon is the single biggest mistake you've made in property? And then most importantly, mm. what did you learn from it? Mm. Trying to do everything yourself over and over in the early days in different things, whether it was, you know, I, I, I had a van. I had a van with paint in it. <laughs> I, used to, I, used to, I used to like it. I mean, now, you know I can put a shelf up, right? Yeah. It's not hard. <laughs> I can I can I can build a I can put the roof on I mm. can I can do the drains yeah. I can dig a hole. True. Lots of people and I, I know when I start to I remember the first time a flag board blew down like you know a mm. to let board. Yeah. And I got out of my car and put it up with a hammer and something like you can do that. So, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> but actually, actually, you shouldn't. Don't don't have a van. Don't do it. You, you mm. can't scale so if when you try to do all those. You things. try to do too much yourself then, but, but then the big then distance. The, the management side of things. Yeah. Well, it's, it's the distance. Yeah, it's the distance. It's the not understanding. It's the. I mean, okay, I say I can do it, but the the, the things that have tightened up since. You know, I was all self-taught. 
I think I could probably do quite a decent job of it now. I've learned more stuff. Yeah, there was always sh shortcuts or things you missed or things you things you forgot or things you got pulled away back to something else so you didn't remember to go back and do them. On the actual physical building side of things, I mean, you, you say, oh, you sell yourself, yourself a fortune if you know how to do your own electrics or do these things. It's true. But also, you're not qualified if somebody, you know, they'll hurt yourself. There's mm. a big risk there. So what was the worst investment you made then? We'll come back to that one, because that's not a property investment. I was going to say, um, you, know, you know, when I was talking about doing, um, taking on too much, it also is true for the management side of things as well. Right. The, the mistakes, trying to do too much actually physically, but trying to do too much on the management side of things and not don't knowing it. There's a load of mm. stuff when you're letting a property out. You've just got to take care of it. If you don't, yeah, it, goes wrong. it goes wrong. Yeah, so the biggest mistake, uh, best worst investment. Coffee machine. Um, <laughs> you, you coffee. I'll, 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 I'll put it for you. You know what? I like, it's 40 grand in stocks and shares and I lost it. I was, I was drunk. <laughs> I was drunk and a guy said, here's a good tip. And drunk, I managed to open up an ISA account on Barclays, <laughs> transfer 40 grand over, 20 grand for me and uh, Emily. And within six weeks, suspended trading, sold it or something. Brilliant. Cheers, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> we all just laughed. There was a group of us around the table. Pretty oh, much yeah, hilarious. Did yeah. Everybody did it. Right. And, uh, yeah, we still go out to Dave and say, remember that time you, um, he lost quite a little bit more than we did. So he was all in. He wasn't like he was, uh, and uh, I'm a big boy, I can take it. But, um, yeah, it just... Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't do stocks yeah, shows. I don't understand anything about well, neither it. Neither do I. That's, so, that all right. my rule. But so that's, your worst, Dave. that's your worst <laughs> cash. Is there a property investment you look back on and you think, oh, why did I do that? Honestly, no, but there should be. There definitely should be. I don't look back very often like that. Most of the stuff that was terrible at the time, you get over. It's more the, it's not the financial. Time heals it. it, right? Yeah, it's more the, 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 the time and effort. It was a pain. Yeah, you know, I mm. remember a couple of houses, they were too far away. I didn't do enough, a, a good enough job of the renovation, not because I didn't want to. Either a bit of it, I couldn't afford to do the right bit. I didn't know what the right bit was, another part of it. And it ended up just being a dogged, horrible mess for a long time and never really made much money. Do you know what? Was it meant to be a flip or was it meant... We ended up selling it. I, I will say, I don't sell houses. I think that was unless they were meant to be a flip. I think that might be one of the... Did I go into it thinking it was going to be kept and then it turned into a flip just so that I could always keep saying we never sell houses? <laughs> it was it was a bit of a mess. So it was too far away. There's some leasehold flats where things weren't as good as they should have been. I was unsure. Well, that's not terrible. If you buy the leasehold flat and it's you know, the service charge right and you know you do all your due diligence, but I didn't. That was a bit of a pain, but we still got them. They've gone up in value and they make good money now. So nothing that keeps you up at night then? What, buying? Like buying Just wise? nothing like that, you know, no. property-wise. Because, you know, I meet people all the time who, I guess you kind of look at things a bit more positively, right? Some people um, get themselves really worked up about I, these I've, things. I, you, you, hear, you hear stories and, and from other people's points of view, and I do still understand why they're kept up at night. I mean, you, mm. Landlord in London, know him, okay? So he's bought a house. It's a expensive house now. It wasn't when he bought it, so he's often really well on the capital appreciation, but he's taken it all out. Mm. Great, fine. Taking it all out. His mortgage is now at such a level that he can't refinance out. Yeah. Rents have gone up, great. But now when he's coming to refinance, they need the rents to be up here, actually. And the stress test says, and he's Section 24 tax, and he's paying £1,000 a month to keep the property. Wow. And, of course, that's a nightmare situation. Mm. Am I this clever dick? I'm nowhere near that ever. Could, you, you know the numbers of the yeah, stuff yeah. that we buy. And I've bought the same stuff all the way through, where wherever it's been in the country, even the stuff that was in Northampton that was a bit silly because we bought too much too quick. The numbers work now, and the, the, you know, sure. I've never been neck and neck equity, so no, I've got a solid, stable portfolio now, and everything just works, no regrets. Yeah. Perfect, so mm. let's talk about, what's another thing people mention a lot, exit strategy. So mm. when you started investing mm. in, in property, did you have an exit strategy in mind then? No. And have you got one now? Maybe. We do get asked it a lot. Well, I suppose um, most, most pretty much everyone asks yeah. it. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's always because I was treating it like more like a, a lifestyle, a business, um, a a thing that I'm in for for a long time. Mm -hmm. I know some people get into an investment thing. What's my exit? Because I'm getting out in five, ten years. I'm never getting out. The properties I'm buying, I can. I'm not selling them. Pass them on to the kids. That is probably the exit so you're gonna strategy. Encourage the kids into property, then you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they can do what they want. I want them to do something that makes them happy. But I think that they, they, I need to keep my properties in such a condition. Yeah. Whether that's physically, paperwork, tenants, 
the management accounts, everything put together in a board pack every month. And they, they can just walk in and a management team says to them, this is where we're at. Because that was going to once every half a year. So yeah, yeah every, every, not, not even once a month. Because I know a few people who have said to me, what if my kids don't want it? What happens to the mortgages? They'll all have mortgages in their names. They'll all have loads of debt. What, what's your thoughts around that? Well, it's easy fix, isn't it? Easy fix. So you either keep the debt or you don't. You just take the decision, flip the switch and start paying out. I'm, I'm on interest only mortgages for mm-hmm. almost everything. I say almost everything. Lots of the commercial stuff, you can't get an interest only mortgage. So they're paying down and actually I've paid it down. All the commercial stuff, I've owned it long enough now, so it's all owned in cash. I'd rather it wasn't. What I tend to do now is put a, um, a charge on it to buy other letting businesses. That's, that's yeah, kind of true. what we're um, doing and, and other things. Yeah, passing it on to the kids. In, inside a limited company, it's very tax efficient. Or will I change my mind in my sixties and just start spending a little lot? Oh, you, uh, spend it. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. but, but why? Why? There's lots of lots of people spend lots of time thinking about the problem mm. of how to how to deal with it in forty years yeah, time. Yeah, true. Just make sure you make it in the next five and ten years. Enjoy it in the middle. Start. I mean, we've got wills. We've got lasting powers of attorney. We've got yeah, trust. Start as you mean to go on. We're not, right? we're not being mm. we're not being flippant about it. Yeah. But really, yeah, my 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 kids. Um, are in their teenage years. Who knows? In their mid twenties, they might become a billionaire. They might look after me. They probably might be nice stuff. Who knows? Yeah, you never you know. Did. In which case, sod it. I'll liquidate it and spend it. But <laughs> um, I've got this little uh, dream. I know a couple of people have done it. You move abroad, you can liquidate stuff and um, um, live on a boat. But actually, when I do the numbers, I don't need to. I, don't, you, I could buy the boat, move abroad, keep the income mm. there. And, and why would you liquidate it? What are you going to do with that pot of money? Yeah, that's my big question. Actually, if you sell it all. You end up with a big pot of money. What are you going to do with that? True. Put it back in houses? Yes. Probably. For me. <laughs> yeah. Not leaving it sat in the bank making nothing. Or, and this is, the, yeah, that, remember that letter? It's, you know, letter only up to £75,000 is guaranteed. Mm. It, it came out positively. Yeah, it's very true. It said up to £75,000. Well, I had a lot more than £75,000 in the bank at that mm. point. It's like, mm-hmm.